Sir John Franklin is best known for his attempts to find the lucrative Northwest Passage, a near-mythical route from the Atlantic to the Pacific and its many trading partners. The expedition vessels were the HMS Erebus and the HMS Terror. Both were stocked with three years of provisions, along with desalinators, steam engines for heating and power. Franklin was experienced in the Arctic, and well liked by his crew. The general mood was optimistic, with many believing the voyage would take only one year. This well-provisioned expedition was seen heading west by whaling ships in Baffin Bay on July 26, 1845. After this, they were never seen again. For the first couple years, the lack of contact was considered normal. It wasn't until 1847 that expeditions began to search for Franklin. Other explorers discovered that Franklin's crew spent the first winter ice-locked just off Beachy Island. On the island, three graves were discovered, along with evidence of a camp. As the ice melted in the summer of 1846, Franklin had sailed further west and then south toward King William Island. On the northern coast of the island, a naval record was recovered, stating that the crew were trapped in the ice for the winter of 1847, but that Franklin was commanding and spirits remained high. However, scribbled in the margins of the letter was another message written in April 1848, stating that Franklin had died along with 23 of his men. It also said that the ships had remained trapped throughout the summer, and now the 105 remaining crew were beginning their trek south towards the nearest trading outpost. They never reached the outpost. Later, explorers who made contact with the Inuit were told stories of a camp with 30 corpses in tents laying outside. In the cook pots at this camp were human remains. In the final days of the Franklin expedition, they had resorted to cannibalism. Sir John Franklin was on the surface a great leader for this expedition. He had experience in the Arctic and was well liked by his men. However, upon deeper investigation, flaws in Franklin's leadership begin to emerge. The three graves on Beachy Island were exhumed in the 1980s. They were remarkably well preserved. What was interesting with these bodies were the elevated lead levels. In their effort to keep costs down, the Admiralty had gone with the lowest bidder who used lead in their canning process. All the men on the Franklin expedition were suffering from lead poisoning, a poisoning that only grew worse as the expedition dragged on. The ships the Admiralty had chosen for the voyage also appeared fine until further inspection. The Terror and the Erebus had been used in Arctic voyages previously with no issue. However, both ships were too large for the many shallow Arctic passages further from the open ocean and the coal engines on each only gave 25 horsepower and had enough coal to run for but 12 days. Franklin, despite his supposed experience in the Arctic, did not bring these issues to his superiors and remained quiet and dutiful. As time wore on, they suffered from lead poisoning and scurvy in the cold, dark Arctic winters. Early on, scurvy can lead to fatigue, fever, muscle pain. Later, gums become swollen and bleed, teeth fall out. There's bleeding and swelling of the joints along with severe bruising. This was the fatal flaw of Franklin and the Admiralty. No contingencies or rescue plans were made until it was too late. The Franklin legacy is steeped in blood, ice, and mystery. We will never know exactly what occurred on the barren slopes of King William Island. Franklin's expedition did eventually lead to the actual discovery of the Northwest Passage, as later explorers learnt from his mistakes. But the bones and sunken ships still remain in the Arctic Ocean, as a reminder of the danger that complacency can bring.